Well, that was a nice streaming holiday. Let's get back to it, shall we? Hello, welcome back. It's the Sunday service, episode 309. And we are back from a break. From time away from streaming. But this week I bring you new games on the streams. Well, I say new games. We've seen, a, we've seen two of them before on stream. We've seen this during our Extra Life special or charity special to try and get achievements and one on Tuesday if you look way back into the archives on the Tig Whippy on YouTube you'll see Child of Light already but we're going to be restarting them both hello Michael how you doing man welcome in so yeah we're going to be restarting them both And then, of course, we've got a brand new game of Chronology on Thursday, but that, that's to come. This is this morning. This this morning, we're back. Time for Back to the Future. was nice, Freak was nice. Got to see my nephew a couple of times, you know, um, watched a load of Blu-rays. Just basically tried to chill out a little bit, so yeah, it was, it was good. It was quite good. How have you been, matey? How have you been? Before we begin, would you like to see notifications when Marty has a new goal? Yes. Yes, I do. Alright, I'm ready. Good evening. I'm Dr. Emmett Brown. I'm standing on the parking lot at Twin Pines Mall. It's Saturday morning, October 26, 1985. Just for Lloyd, by the Really this good, is isn't it? In the film, nobody. Number one. Come on, I need. Hey, boy, get in there. That a boy. In you go. Get down. Get your seatbelt on. That's it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, one more day of this heat, Please mate, and it starts to cool down. The is in precise synchronization with my control watch. Got it? Right, Jack Doc. Good. Have a good trip, Einstein. Watch your head. Now, I do also want to say, you got that thing hooked up to the back seating car. is allowed in this. Watch this. Let us work yeah, through this okay. together. Got it. Not me. The car. The car. My calculations are correct. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious shit. I've also, by the way, this? found a game that doesn't have uh, its trophies linked properly. Isn't that great? I tell you, 88 miles per hour! Temporal displacement occurred at exactly 1.20 a.m. and zero seconds! Ah, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, Doc. You disintegrated Einstein. Calm down, Marty. <laughs> the molecular structure of both like you and that, are completely intact. Well, where the hell are they? The appropriate question is, when the hell are they? You see, Einstein has just become the world's first time traveler. I sent him into the future. One minute into the future, to be exact. And at precisely 1.21 a.m. and zero seconds, we shall catch up with him and the time machine. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You you put your dog in a time machine made out of a DeLorean? 
way I see it, if you're going to build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Besides, the stainless steel construction made the flush dispersal. Get out some truck from the film, the lines in the film. Ah, <laughs> uh, Doc? Huh, that's peculiar. Oh, uh, where's the car, Doc? It should have caught up with us 27 seconds ago. Doc, uh, what happened to Einstein? No need for concern. It's probably just a minor miscalibration of the time circuit. Marty, could you get my notebook? It should be in the toolbox. Okay, so Doc needs his notebook. Walk Marty to the left until you see his toolbox. Ha. Notebook, notebook. Got it. Flux capacitor? That's it! What the heck's a flux capacitor? My latest invention. The thing that makes time travel possible. In this notebook, I detail the nearly three decades of scientific breakthroughs necessary to build a working time machine. If it ever fell into the wrong hands, the consequences could be catastrophic. Let's see. It's mass equals I times Z and E equals the square root of Z times C squared. And the flux... Consequences could be catastrophic? Whoa, deja vu. Uh, that very deja vu. Great Scott. Doc, what, what is about all right, George? I've made He's saying great stuff. Mistake. I'm sorry, Marty. Doc, come back! Doc! Doc Brown is fading into existence. Marty? <laughs> Weird science post okay? that night. Nice. Yeah, Mom, I... It was Might be it was just a nightmare. Uh, I was in the past, and, and Doc was there. Well, you're safe and sound now. Back in good old 1986. But you'd better get up. Your father's waiting for you. Huh? Weren't you going to meet him over at Doc's? Holy crap, I'm late. So I wonder how many weeks it's going to take us to complete this. Too late to stop the sale? Better late than never. You wouldn't believe how much rare stuff there is back here. That's Doc stuff. The city has no right now, to. Now, son, I know you're upset, but your friend's been gone for months, and the city really seems hell bent on using his land for that new parking garage. And hey, is that a first edition Jules Verne? It's just not fair. Well, well this way, Michael, we can actually worse. both go for it at the same time, then, can't we, really? Hey, Marty. Hi, Biff. Come to see if the old crackpot had any buried treasure? Nah, I guess I'm just... Hello, Corn. 
remembering. <laughs> well, it's not going to go back to 1986, I can say that. Select items around the lab to make sure Doc didn't leave anything dangerous lying around. Okay. I mean, it's television, that could be dangerous. Einstein's bowl. built this model of downtown Hill Valley way back in 1955. <coughs> the clock tower in the courthouse even works. It's very true, Corp. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, that looks just like the courthouse. You gotta hand it to the old coot. He was good with his hands. Uh, Biff, uh, can, can I see that a minute? This would look great in my fish tank. Give the old carp something new to nibble on. Can I see that model courthouse for just a second? I need to get something out of it. Like what? A not guilty verdict? That was a joke. Oh, huh. but really, can I? Nah, I think I'll hold on to it. Give it here, Biff. Well, well, look at what we have here. Looks like plans for something. What's a flux catheter? It's none of your business. Doc asked me Browns to... Browns worm food, kid. But this looks like it might be worth something. <laughs> <sighs> Biff. Biff, 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 biff. Hope that wasn't poison gas or anything. Feels I like that was a long ago. No. <laughs> Actually, I guess it was. Oh, I, I think I remember what we need to do to get that out of Biff's hand. Jukebox. Hey, let me try, Marty. <laughs> so it needs a manure exit. Now, Biff, let Marty have his turn. Uh, you got it, Mr. McFly. Where is it? Electrical equipment, hang on. Looks like a hand crank lightning rod, or maybe a lightning powered pencil sharpener. Hey, Dad, why's my guitar got a price tag on it? Sorry, son. Must have been an overzealous clerk. Just pick it up. I'll iron things out with the bank. Sad Marty's guitar. Photo George McFly. Here's an oldie, but a goodie. One, two, three. <laughs> hey, look, it's Chuck Butthead. Let me show you how it's done. Now, Biff, I think that's Marty's guitar. <laughs> oh, uh, gosh, uh, you're right, Mr. McFly. Oh, here you go, Marty. Let's hear a few licks. Wow, that was sizzling hot. Like a melting ice cube. Quality's good, but it needs more bass. And treble. And, and volume. So how do, we, how do we turn the volume up then on that? I mean, that's clocks. We don't... I wonder why because you see what we're going to do, living. right? We're gonna turn the volume fish up. Tank. I never knew Doc raised fish. And we're Doc's gonna send Biff into the stratosphere. Yeah. I kinda like Doc. I'll probably never know what this is for. Hey, Biff. Eh. Uh. I only want that notebook because, well, I'm, I'm sentimental. It's like a piece of Doc. Doc's dead. <laughs> it might do, but it a Doc could care. That 
that notebook wouldn't mean anything to you. You wouldn't even understand what's in it. You calling me ignorant? Yes. Yes, I am. It's just a notebook with Doc's scribblings. What did Doc ever accomplish? Nothing. And then it's worthless, right? If it was really worthless, you wouldn't want it so bad. I just can't let you keep that notebook. It's dangerous. What, is it set to explode or something? Well, uh, in a way. I'll take my chances. <sighs> I'll pay you for it. How much? Um, Not enough. Uh, never mind. <laughs> Somehow. Now, something your kids are really gonna like. Thanks for warming them up for me, butthead. Biff, I thought I told you not to take my son's guitar. Oh, right. Uh, sure thing, Mr. McFly. Uh, I was just warming them up for you, Marty. Let's see what you got. See, it's not doing the... Quality's good, but it needs more bass. And treble. And, and volume. You see what I mean? We have to turn the volume up somehow. So as I say, if you got any ideas, let us know. Ah. Let's make some noise. Here we go. You did indeed, Corn. Now that is a dangerous amp. You want to hear a number by Biff and the Biff Tones? Always happy to play for my adoring fans. Now, Biff. Oh, yeah. Here you go, Marty. <sighs> Man, you kids have ruined rock and roll. Did that fall out? Hey, Biff. Uh, never mind. Okay, so we put it up. Do we, do we need to put it up even more? I better not crank it up anymore. I really don't want to blow this thing out again. No, you I do. I better not crank it up anymore. I really don't want to blow this thing out again. Now that is a dangerous amp. Now what? You want to hear a number by Biff and the Biff Tones? Always happy to play for my adoring fans. Now, Biff. Oh, yeah. Here you go, Marty. Say, hey, Biff, do you want to play the guitar? Kids have ruined rock and roll. Need another hint, yes, okay. Oh, I see, right, okay, so talk to you gotta to talk to George. Hey Dad. Uh, right, okay. About Biff. Dad, I know you're trying to help. He talks a big game, son, but he's not so tough. I've been dealing with him a long time. Believe me, I can handle him. So can I. I guess you can. Okay, son, I'll stay out of your way. But you know where to find me. I'll keep looking around. Thanks, Dad. Now it should be fine. You want to hear a number by Biff and the Biff Tones? Always happy to play for my adoring fans. Now watch me blow the lid off this joint. Whatever you say. Whoa! Rock 
gone, Biff. Oh, shit. We got there eventually, but yeah. Ah, Doc, where are you? Where do you come from, boy? Didn't you bring Doc with you? Now we need power again, I believe. But I'm not sure whether they're using Micro J Fox. Retrieval? In case of my failure to return to the DeLorean within an allotted time, I programmed the time machine to jump to these four dimensional coordinates without me. As you are well aware, time travel is an inherently risky activity, and despite my elaborate precautions, there's always the possibility that I could land in trouble sometime. And that sometime is now, or then, or uh, maybe later. He's in trouble. Marty, come to my rescue in the past. Or was it the future? Anyway. I'm relying on you to do it again. Please, take the DeLorean back, or, or forward, to whatever it is I'm stuck in time. When you get there, I'm sure you'll figure out what to do. That's it? Now, aren't you gonna tell me when that is? Just go to the date specified on the time circuit readout under the heading mark, Last Time Departed. Good luck. Right, right, Last Time Departed, Last Time Departed. Uh, oh, jeez. Come on, come on. Come on. Crap! Oh, great. How am I supposed to find him now? <laughs> well, hey, Doc, I know I haven't seen you in a few months, but I'm pretty sure this isn't your shoe. Looks like the time circuits still work. Now I only need to know when to look for Doc. I can use those to enter a date into the time circuits. Once I know when to look for Doc. Is it on the shoe, though? Mm hmm. This time traveling shoe is my only clue to finding Doc. It looks like a clog. Nah. This notebook has all of Doc's plans for the flux capacitor and the DeLorean. I'd better make sure it never falls into the wrong hands. And by wrong hands, I mostly mean bit. I mean, you still could have in terms of voice acting. Is it on Einstein's dog collar? What kind of trouble is Doc in, Einie? Einstein will remember this. What kind of trouble is Doc in, Einie? So something in the DeLorean. Hmm. 
what do I I, I, do I give Fingley the, the, the I, I give Einstein the shoe okay I mean dogs do like shoes right what do you know about this shoe Einie? great Scott I think he's onto something Okay, now we're getting somewhere. How's this supposed to lead me to Doc, Einie? Let's look at the arcade sign. It's, in, it's going to be in that house, Our isn't it? Zero. I hope Jimmy's fixed the wild gunman machine. What kind of trouble is Doc in, Einie? Why couldn't Doc have invented a dog translator? Is in do is in uh, very rough shape. Step away from the door. Ah. Now, let me get a look at you. Einstein, come on. Oh, okay. Just as I suspected, hooligans. Get along now. Scat. Live what? I don't like wild gunmen. You have to. Nope, no idea. Welcome in, Lenza. Been a while. How are you? I'm not a hooligan, ma'am. I'm a, a teenager. I wasn't born yesterday, young man. Aren't you the miscreant who skateboard through the town square every morning between 8 and 8 30 in a decidedly un manner? Uh, yeah. Yeah, because I haven't, I haven't played it anywhere I completed it as far as I was concerned. Once I finished the World Ch Championship and won the World Title, that was it. Well, see, that's the thing. I'm not sure why I'm here. Einstein here brought me, and... Can you let me in? I've got something to show you. What is it? Let me see. Mysterious shoe. A shoe? Now, now, what would I want with a... Huh? <gasps> Stay there! Well, so far so good. <laughs> it's like what? I'm showing a shoe. <laughs> Leave that creature outside. <gasps> Sorry, Einstein. Poor Einstein. <laughs> Morning, Jay. How you doing, man? Great Scott. enough um there's a lot of stairs to return the shoe i mean i lost it ages ago you can put it down next to the other one how goes it dude mm, much better so neat and orderly now nah, i suppose you'll be wanting some sort of reward now no i yeah, you're All fucked I up body clock and candy but I'm sorry I called you a hooligan. I try not to jump to conclusions, but after all, this nine out of ten either. people in this city are hooligans. It's a fact. Look it up. Now, if I remember correctly, uh, there's something you have to distract her by you find her something in here. Question is what? Don't touch those. My newspapers are in pristine condition and meticulously organized. 
Not about to let some street punk get jam all over them. <laughs> like, jam? I don't have jam on my fingers. What are you on about? Oh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Ms. Pretty Whiskers is very particular about who handles her food. <laughs> is that Vice Principal Strickland? Mother never could keep little Gerald out of her clothes. <laughs> what are these? My editorial trophies. Cat Lover's Quarterly. It's legitimate journalism. So yeah, as I say, uh, in this, backseating is allowed for this. Uh, Miss Strickland, about your tea. You forgot to turn on you! the... You! It's spelled with a U, you illiterate vandal! Right, okay. Yeah, poor Jay, Jay's for, um... Poor Jay's body clock is just so out of whack. Next time for a while. That shoe from the past. But when in the past? Right, so we have to find... Oh, the candy looks older than I am. Mind if I take a look? Go ahead, dear. Man, these are because powerful. we're looking for the date when Doc wants to go store. find him. Yeah, you wouldn't believe the filth that boy watches. Yeah, he's nothing but an out-of-control hedonist. Just like his father. Yep, <laughs> I hear that. There's a clue to find a doc out there. I'm not seeing it. I don't even know where to start looking. Uh, Miss Strickland? Jack! Diane! I know what you're doing behind that tree! Yes? Do you remember when you lost your shoe? Shoe? That shoe over there. Oh, that shoe! <laughs> Hi, what a nosy Nelly! No one likes a busybody, you know. But... Oh, fine, let me think about it. Uh... Yes, I, I remember. I, I lost it in a scuffle with a, a dog. <gasps> when was it? Oh, yes. The day that speakeasy burned down. <laughs> A speakeasy? In Hill Valley? Don't act so surprised, young man. Your generation doesn't hold a copyright on moral depravity, you know. Just sin has been on the prowl in Hill Valley since the day it was founded. I mean, it looks like there's going to be a lot of, of niche references and little callbacks to this, doesn't it? with all these newspapers this is my personal archive i've got every issue of the hill valley telegraph ever published get out every single in issue. a way like ghostbusters afterlife 1871 to the present if it happened in hill valley you'll find it in my stacks i guess somewhere in these stacks there must be an article about the speakeasy burning down Naturally. Yeah, I probably wrote it myself. Huh, okay. I was quite a reporter back in the day. See, Any I never heard that, that song. article came out. I've well, I know of John Mellencamp, but I've never heard Jackie say easy burn down. Or that I know of. Wow, a speakeasy. That must have been wild. Is it true they used to drink gin out of slippers like my grandma said? Don't romanticize the past, young man. Prohibition was a time when gangsters ruled the town while honest citizens quaked in their beds. So where was it? That speakeasy that burned down, I mean. That was ages ago. If you're looking for bootleg hooch... No, I I'm just curious, that's all. I'm a, a student of history. Student of history, my Aunt Fanny. Yeah, your generation of hooligans and slackers could give two ripe 
things about history. Miss Strickland? Oh, video store! Huh? The speakeasy used to be hidden in plain sight down there in the town square. Right when that New subscription received. Dispensing gratitude. Store. Gratitude dispensed. <laughs> I think he's video a something. That's how you did, man. Burned down. <laughs> one, two, two, one, year, as I recall. Marty, we're in trouble. You gotta come with me, your kids. It's your kids, Marty. Doing some stargazing? No, I set my sights on the lower things. Is that? Jim Cannon! Get away from that hubcap before I call your father! How you doing, dude? Right, so we've got to get her out the way so we can look at the newspapers. How are we going to do this? It's Kleenex on the ground, is that? Right, okay. <laughs> that tea's never going to boil. That tea's never going to boil. Well, yeah, surely we can do something about that. Okay, so Edna lost a shoe. Yes. Video store. On a building. So maybe we need the binoculars then to look for the building. Yes. So it's not the newspapers, it's the building. Ah. 1932. Was that January 1932 I saw? Rebuilt oh, no. in February. February 1932. There we go. The fire must have happened before then. But when? I need a date. Yeah, Don't I need to go like me. I'm far too old for you. Right, so February 1932, that's where we need to look in the newspapers. I told you not to touch those! So now we need to distract her. That tea's never gonna boil. So how do we distract her? Miss Strickland lost that shoe on the day the speakeasy burned down. And I know that was sometime in 1932. But I've got to get more specific than that if I'm going to find Doc. So on the pictures? Man, she keeps it hot in here. That's the kettle. I'll be right back with some tea. Now uh -huh. don't touch anything. Go now, go now, Marty, go now. Right. Let's see. Ground broken on site of former speakeasy. Singer vanishes. Hill Valley Expo delights crowd. Soup kitchen exposed. Here we go. Speakeasy arsonist slain. Legal procedure gave way to old-fashioned vengeance last night when a mob descended on the Hill Valley police station. The suspect in the speakeasy arson case, a drifter known as Carl Sagan, was pulled from his... Carl Sagan? It's Doc! Killed by a mob. What's the date? June 14th, 1931. Jeez, I gotta rescue him. My newspapers! Sorry, Miss Strickland. Uh, let no! me... No! You've gotten my history out of order! Oh, do you know how long it'll take to fix what you've done? All day, no! probably. Get out! Remember wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Marty, where you been, son? And what are you doing in that getup? <laughs> he does, you know. It's... 
a costume. Uh, tonight's the big uh, Halloween party. Halloween party? In May? Yeah, getting it early. Never mind, you don't have to explain. I'm sure whatever it is you're up to, you know what you're doing, right? I hope so. Hey, sometimes you gotta go out on a limb for the ones you love, right? Wish my dad had understood that. You won't stay away too long. You'll barely know I was gone. I mean, you could be but a second. Uh... Ready to go, Einstein? <laughs> yeah, get in, Einstein. We're going. Time circuits on. Flux capacitor, uh, fluxy. Okay, if Doc's gonna get killed on June 14th, 1931, I'll just show up the day before and, and get him out. Show up the week doing, before. Doc. Have seven days to try to sort the shit out rather than a day. I don't get that. Showing up a day before, you cut it fine. And the cop pulls him over at 87. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Wasn't the DeLorean flying at this point? Prohibition. Yeah, that thing was in the Constitution. Ah, uh, okay. Go back and just get the train. That's <laughs> well. Get the flying train. Oh, we got an achievement. Einstein. Where'd you go now, boy? Yeah, but didn't they need uh, plutonium to power it in 1885, or was it? Or didn't they not change it to um, just normal garbage by that time? <laughs> yeah. Is it taking her to the fuel tank? Young man. <laughs> Excuse me, young man. Who? Me? You're the only man in the street, and I'm looking for a man-in-the-street reaction. Naturally, you know about the explosion that destroyed this illegal gin establishment. I read about it, yeah. What's your opinion of Carl Sagan, the stranger who single-handedly did what the law has been unable to do for ten long years, namely, rid Hill Valley of the scourge of liquor? Uh... I mean, you call it scourge. There's got to be some sort of mistake here. Doc, I mean, uh, uh, Carl wouldn't do something like that. It's surprising the lengths a person will go to when it's a clear-cut matter of right and wrong. You what was the noise, Pixel? You. you do support the side of righteousness, I trust. After payment. Is there workmen around here, or did someone just nick the pavement? Or was it a sinkhole? Just suddenly, suddenly showed up. 
How'd Doc get himself into... Doc? Doc is his nickname. I'm good friends with Carl. You are? Really? Oh, but I need an unbiased opinion for my story. Pretend you don't know him. How would you feel about this heroic act of destruction? Well, uh, I'm not so big on bomb blasts. Yes, but this bomb blasted a speakeasy, the very symbol of lawlessness and corruption. You're all for cleaning up the town, aren't you? You have a message for the vicious gangsters who still roam these streets? No doubt plotting to corrupt our citizens with another den of booze, sin, and debauchery. Poor bugger in this seat. Ask him where I can get the address. Ah, I see! Because you want to blast it to smithereens just like Carl Sagan did. With public-spirited citizens like you around, the lawless element will be on the run in no time. Mr. May I get your name? Eastwood. Yeah, it's... <laughs> Sonny Crockett, Harry Callahan, or Michael Carleone. Go on, chat, which one do you want? Do you want Dirty Harry? Do you want Crockett from Mary Vice? Or Corleone? So we got one for Corleone, one for Dirty Harry. Uh, I'm gonna make you laugh, you can't refuse. Uh. <laughs> You're not cool enough to be Corleone. <laughs> so free for if Brown is Doc, then you can be the Doc. <laughs> but many people say Dirty Harry, so I go in Dirty Harry. Harry. Callahan. Thank you for sharing your candid opinions, Mr. Callahan. Edna Strickland, Hill Valley Herald. Did he use six bombs or five? I know. I met you back. I mean, I'm familiar with your work. You read my column? How sweet! I know it's just an etiquette column, but I believe it'll lead to bigger and better... Oh! Einstein, no! Down, boy! Is this wretched creature yours? He assaulted me once before. What's got into you? Aggressive dogs must be kept on leash at all times. It's the law. Look it up. Doc. I gotta find Doc. So he's, he's gotta be at the police station then, isn't he? Hmm. Yes. <laughs> I guess this is where the speakeasy burned down. How did Doc ever get mixed up in that? I mean, you say burned down, but it blew up. <laughs> I broken some ugly then? doggo. Um, no. Then get out. Um, I think I have a broken sword somewhere as well. Steady. No, he isn't. <laughs> right, so we need to find Doc then, so we're going to be running all over the place. Yeah, it's very sort of uh, Resident Evil, isn't it? Mr. Tannen to you, Artie. What are you doing out here? Well, I was getting kind of hungry, so I figured I'd come down here for some free soup. Just thought I'd come down for some soup. Think, McFly. The DA's throwing around subpoenas like Babe Ruth. I don't think Ruth's a pitcher anymore. Shut it. If one of those subpoenas landed in the hands of my number cruncher, I'd be in a whole lot of trouble. I could even get sent up the river. You wouldn't want that, would you? I mean, set up the river. Would you? Uh, no, of course not, kid. All right, that's better. What are you looking at, punk? Keep your eyes on the soup, kid. Well? Well, what? <laughs> well, what are you still doing here? Sorry, kid, I'll just run back to the safe house. You do that. And McFly? Yes? That hat's too flashy. 
You better let me hold on to it. Uh, now scram! You got it. You should have been sleeping with the dishes. <laughs> don't come out until I give you the all clear. I swear, if even one of you mooks could add two plus two without your fingers, I'd dump that wimp into the lake. By any order. Hey! Anyway, I'm off to make myself irresistible. Don't let anyone burn down the shop while I'm gone. Right, okay. <sighs> Looks like these pipes go into the basement. First of all, let's go find Doc in the police station. Because I have a feeling we're going to be using this in a bit anyway. I mean, if you put two and two together rather than add them up, then yeah. Sisters of Mercy Soup Kitchen. Come for the soup, stay for the salvation. I wonder if it's too hot to cry like thunder. If you have any extra, do you give it to the Temple of Love? Who are you and what do you want? Can I talk to uh, Carl Sagan? Are you his lawyer? Um, no. Then scram. Easy. Steady. Right, okay. Do we use something then in the soup kitchen to go underneath into the police station to go... No, because the jail window's there. Doc! Mark! Doc! What are you doing here? You sent for me, Doc. I did? When? May 14th, 1986. 1980? <gasps> the automatic retrieval system, of course. I'd almost forgotten about that. So what's our plan for getting you out of here? Plan? We don't need a plan. We don't. Not in the slightest. The police picked me up for that speakeasy fire a couple of weeks ago, but the DA hasn't got a case. They're releasing me tomorrow morning. So basically, I traveled 50 years into the past to deliver your car? Sorry about that, but it's so wonderful to see you. We have a lot of catching up to do. Yeah, you, you might want to hold off on that, Doc. Right, Scott! I'm going to be gunned down by gangsters on the steps of the courthouse! Why would they do that? Guess they didn't approve of my burning down their speakeasy. Very funny, Doc. Maybe now we should come up with a plan? A plan? Right! But what? Hmm. Yeah, let's... Hey, maybe I could talk to the gangsters. Tell them they're about to shoot the wrong guy. I don't think the criminals of this era are going to be very receptive to a complete stranger telling them that their secret assassination plan is misguided, do you? I think he did, but we know that, um, we know that Michael J. Fox didn't. I take the DeLorean, go back in time before you were arrested, and stop you from getting caught in the first place. Don't even think about it. Without my unjust incarceration, the events that sent you into the past might never happen, resulting in a paradox of continuum shattering proportions. Jeez, we've been back together for five minutes, Doc. And you're already talking about the end of the universe. I've missed that. Don't be ridiculous, Marty. I was only referring to the end of the universe as we know it. Yeah, it doesn't sound too far off thing, did it? Did it? That's no. I've forgotten how to speak during my time off. <laughs> he, he does a good job. He doesn't sound too far away from Michael J. Fox. There we go. <clears throat> well, I suppose I could just get some dynamite and break you out of jail. No, no, that's far too dangerous. Not just to me, but to random innocent people in the past. The repercussions could be. <gasps> that's it. What's it? My rocket-powered drill. You have a rocket-powered drill? Not yet. I haven't built it yet. You Did they use the voice actor for Listen, Biff? A few months ago, my 17-year-old self sent in a patent application for a rocket-powered drill. I abandoned the project after I never heard back from the patent office, but the prototype should be nearly complete. Great. I'll just run back to your lab and... No, no, I said nearly complete. You'll need me to help you finish it. How the hell am I supposed to sneak a half-finished rocket-powered drill into your cell? Not me, me. 1931 me! Wait a minute, Doc. You want me to convince your 1931 self to build a rocket-powered drill to break you out of jail? Precisely! 
Right, okay. How am I supposed to get you to build a rocket? Right, okay. How am I supposed to convince your younger self to finish the rocket drill? Just tell him I need to break his older self out of jail? Absolutely not. Whatever you do, you can't tell my younger self anything about time travel. I won't come up with the inspiration for the flux capacitor for another 24 years. Then what am I supposed Just to... Just be your charming self. From what I remember, I'm a pretty easygoing kid, so enlisting me in a scientific adventure should be a piece of cake. Okay, well, let's say I go along with this crazy idea. Where can I find you? I mean, uh, the other you. How should I know? It was over 50 years ago. Why did you go over to the soup kitchen next door and give my house a call? <laughs> They'll know where to find me. Soup kitchen. Got it. Just stay away from the soup. It'll cause irreparable damage to your digestive system. See? <laughs> I guess I better get started. Don't worry, Doc. I'll get you out of here in no time. I'm not worried. Once you and my younger self put your heads together, you'll be unstoppable. Right, okay. Now, if there's such a thing as side stuff in this, I'm not too bothered if we do them or not. Hmm, although, is this the port or the original? It's... I mean, this is the 30th anniversary edition of the Telltale game. So if you have the Sisters of Mercy soup, uh, uh, the day afterwards you'll be saying, Lord have mercy. The kitchen's for management only, Rummy. Whoa! Spice rack, cue ball. Lazy hands make a man poor, but diligent hands bring wealth. Maybe that's my problem. Lazy hands. <laughs> yeah, not without permission. <laughs> I don't, don't want inscriptions. I want the telephone. Thank you. <laughs> Brown results. Uh, hi. Uh, do you know where I could find Emmett Brown? Young Master Brown is currently tending to his clerking duties at the courthouse. Who may I say is calling? The courthouse? Doc never told me he worked at the courthouse. Then we're off to the courthouse, aren't we? Say, hey, gang. Yeah. Uh -um. Okay. Hey, um... <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> oh, 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 the FNB. He's, he's like for Vincent Price. Or oh, he's trying to be the butler from Tomb Raider. Yeah, that's like for us. I pray now. Excuse me, could you put me through to... <laughs> no. If you do have the... Do, 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 uh, you know, the old dials. And maybe not. Hello, Moon Queen. How you doing? Hey, it's Einstein. Well, I've made more progress than the last time I played it. I can tell you that much. Hey, how you doing, Einie? So we know he doesn't like the woman, so the woman's up to something. those these are very sensitive legal documents nobody is supposed to handle them but sworn officers of the court papa i mean judge brown says so judge brown doc uh nice to meet you i'm uh harry callahan emmett brown but i am a law clerk not a doctor now please get out of my way i have important business to transact Yeah, the toilet bug earlier. 
<laughs> it's the preppy kid. You, it's like, hey, you know, <laughs> hey, it's preppy. Wait, where did he go? Wait, Emmett, come here. Come, look, Emmett, come here. Those lawyers sound kind of nasty. Listen, Emmett, you don't know me, but I'm your friend. I'm not big on friends. They get in the way of work. <laughs> Bank of Italy seems to be known as Bank of Evil. Ah, okay. <laughs> I understand you're working on a new invention in your lab. Invention? You must have me mixed up with somebody else. I'm in law. I have absolutely no interest in science. At which point you go bullshit. But come here. Come on, wait up a minute. You again? Can't you see I'm busy? See, I'm sort of in the science business myself. That's why I sought you out. <laughs> Not that I care in the least, because science is the furthest thing from my own area of interest, which is law, but I don't believe you. It's true. I'm a scientist. <laughs> Bullshit. So tell me something, Mr. Scientist, from your vast storehouse of scientific knowledge. I had green berries for breakfast, uh, and I'm very hungry. Connected to the thigh bone? <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so you don't want your old man to know. That's fine. But listen, we all keep secrets. But I'm telling you, you can level with me about this science project of yours. I the am not a scientist. Go ahead, ask me what E equals. What does E equal? I have absolutely no idea. See? I don't know where you got your information from about me, mister, but you're wrong, wrong, wrong. Look, Emmett, come here. <laughs> I will punch you in the face. I don't need to go in there anymore. I don't need to go in there anymore. <laughs> it's like, mm. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. Uh. Come on, you can trust me, Doc. Uh, Emmett, it's your future I'm looking e out for. In more ways than one. What are you talking about? I'm talking about you and science. Oh, that word again! If you insinuate I'm a scientist once more, I'll sue you for defamation of character! Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. So we can't talk about this drill. Come on, Doc. Uh, damn it. Uh, drop the Legal Eagle Act. I got something more important for you to do. Mr. Callahan, I'll have you know that the law is the very mortar that holds society together. And we in the legal profession are like brick masons building the edifice of the future. Did your dad tell you that? Every morning. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of defamation. He keeps saying I'm smart. I'm dumb as fuck. <laughs> What's this important business you're up to? It's a legal matter, very complicated, very abstruse. I need to obtain five sets of initials on every copy of this writ of indemnification before Pop... I mean, before Judge Brown can even think of granting a waiver to the party of the first part. You have no idea what it's about, do you? That's how important it is. So, Emmett, what time are you through with work? Depends. On weeknights, Pop sometimes keeps me in the office till nine. Nine at night? But today's Saturday. Right. So I probably won't get off before 10. Good lord. How about you knock off work early and I'll buy you a beer, uh, or soda. What do you say? Don't try to tempt me from my duty with sugary beverages. Keeping the wheels of justice turning, that's my one passion in life. 
Besides, if I left before eight, my pop would kill me. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Pop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Emmett, uh, about don't your... say it. Right, so he has... He sounds a little scared. Okay, so Emmett won't give you the time of day, perhaps, if you two had something in common. So being the law, getting something to be the lure. So, but what? Let's go back to Doc, and then we'll have a look around Einstein. Let's okay. Let's let's look at Einstein. I say, feel free to backseat game this because we can get through this together. Hey, how you doing, Einie? So been to soup kitchen. Stack, Marty, have you found my younger self yet? I have yet. <laughs> well, I met your younger self. Great. And I gotta say, you're kind of uptight what you won't even talk to me i find that hard to believe tell me what happened you know your younger self seems really dedicated to the law it's a facade i assure you i had to keep up appearances to appease my father ah you see i tried asking him about your rocket drill but he says he's not a scientist what what Oh, uh, father. What's he got to do with this? In 1931, I was still deathly afraid of my father discovering the truth about my scientific predilections. So I carefully kept them under wraps, practicing science at odd hours, away from his prying eyes. That sucks. It sucked a lot. Fortunately, I eventually stood up to him. But right now, my younger self probably thinks he's been sent by my father to check up on me. Hmm. What do I do to convince Team Doc that I'm not a spy? I'm uh, not sure. Why does your younger self mutter all the time? Muttering? Why would I be muttering? I, I, I never mutter unless... Uh... The Hill Valley Expo! The Expo? Yes, the Expo. How could I have forgotten? In a few months, the younger me will put on a demonstration at the Hill Valley Exposition, my first public foray into the world of science. Everyone in town will be there, including a number of noted inventors who shaped my career. So, it was a big success? No, it was a miserable failure, but it was a spectacularly miserable failure. One which marked my transition from an amateur garage scientist into a professional seeker of truth. What does this expo have to do with you muttering all the time? When I was younger, I used to relieve stress by working on complex mathematical conundrums. No doubt my younger self is working on some impossible problem in an attempt to work off cerebral steam in the weeks before the exposition. What was I muttering about? I don't know. Uh, H to the something with an inverse of something else. I I'm not so good at equations. That's too bad. I bet if we could solve my younger self's problem, he'd be more inclined to listen to you. Right, uh, okay. I still can't figure out what your younger self is muttering about. Blast! If only I could hear him myself. Let's talk about your younger self's problems later. Okay, but don't forget we're on a bit of a deadline here. Wait a minute. Tape recorder on Emmett. Follow him around. Yeah! Follow, follow him around, use the tape recorder on Emmett, take it back to Doc. Fucking camera angle. Okay, look, stop it. Right.
Fuck it, come on. Do I use the tape recorder on Einstein and get him to... Give me a chance. Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Hoff is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. So he wanders Those backwards and forwards here. People with a dark secret so hide. maybe place the tape recorder somewhere like the pavilion? Damn it. Uh, about Don't your... say it. Maybe? on the sea? Hey, how you doing, Einie? Okay, I'm trying to use the item. Thank you. Okay, so <laughs> we worked that bit out, but we're not it's not letting us do it. No, what do you? I'm d I'm using that, mate. I'm pressing X when it does, and it just brings up the uh, the item. Party. There. Party. chance. Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Hmm. Is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that What's Hill Valley has ever Why seen. won't it let me record him it Brown while, I'm, with while he's mumbling? To hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Damn it. Uh, about don't your... say it. Because I'm pressing X. Yeah. 
I say, if people want to backseat this, do so. Go ahead, not a problem. It's got to be something in here, I think, as he's wandering by. Like placing it somewhere. He wanders there now. How do we get that working? I mean, I would normally just sit in the chair, it'd sit in the seat, the bench, and just go boop. Barber's chair? We wouldn't sit in the barber's chair having a... Uh... Hey, uh, can I get some moose? What does this look like? A hunting lodge? Makes no sense. I mean, we don't bash into him, do we? He knock, knocks his knocks his paper bits over. We put the tape in there. No, because that's not what we need. We need this. because no, I can't knock into him. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. Yeah, no, it just... Uh, about your... say it. We know it's the recorder. So why aren't you working for us, recorder? Why you not let me place it somewhere? Uh, he DM'd me. Okay. You can say it in the chat, though. The key is, as you've said, you have to approach him from behind. If he sees you, it will initiate the dialogue. Make sure you have the tape recorder selected. Right, okay. So you gotta walk behind him. Right, okay, so we, we walked behind him and he didn't see us. Double click X, okay. Double clicking X. Oh, ah, double click A. H to the A multiplied not on the PlayStation on the Xbox. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I, oh, oh.
So I, I, I may have got it there then. It's fucking camera angles. No, stop. Look, right. So, Doc, does this ring a bell? Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to Thank the you. A multiplied by the inverse of A. I Good grief. Know. Is that me? I sound so young. I was going to say intense. I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional membrane. <laughs> so... It'll be fine. <laughs> I didn't for knowing glitches and stuff, probably. <laughs> Hey, progress. For fuck's sake, the controls in this are just fucking awful. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Callahan. Maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Yeah. Great Scott! If H is a Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A. <laughs> That's it! That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week! I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket powered drill. Where did you learn so much about science? <laughs> I read a lot of Jules Verne. Well, it's like this. You know about my rocket power drill. Then there can only be one explanation. What? You're from the patent office. I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome. I'm at your service. What can I do for you? Can I see your rocket power drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. Now, that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> that's fully operational. <gasps> Tonight. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done! I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel. I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol. And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. It's part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket-powered drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to where you get the alcohol you need. <laughs> It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena. Arthur McFly? I've got a subpoena my grandpa. <gasps> it's Kid Tannen. Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen, yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. <laughs> Let's go talk to him anyway. <laughs> yeah, hey, we got another one. Hey, it's Edna who's weird. Progress. Hell, matches. You, you got kiwi all over my socks. Sorry, boss. Get out of here. How about you? Huh? 
I'm sitting at a shoe shine booth. You walk up. Now you see me either you're here trying to keep you in the time and not freak Doc Which Brown out. Well, young Doc out. I'm looking for a guy named Arthur McFly. He's my, uh, sort of a relative. Well, he's my employee. He's very busy today. Isn't that Arthur McFly's hat you're holding? It was McFly's hat. Now, it's my peanut bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Could I buy Arthur's hat off you? Could you keep your mind on your work, huh, shoeshine boy? Hanging on to my peanut bowl. Can I have some peanuts? Why not? I'm a magnanimous kind of guy. Go ahead, knock yourself out. Hey, kid. Yeah? What the hell is that? Hey! <laughs> Give me that hat, you lousy crook. Emmett. That's a very good point. Where did the peanuts go? Shoes got all now. Fix me up. Where do you learn how to move like that? Sandlot football. They used to call me the streak. Get out. I mean, Einstein may have uh, nicked them. There, that's where they came from. <laughs> I'm not talking to you, Edna. You can fuck off. Cabbage soup. Cue ball. What? The truck just arrived with a fresh shipment of, uh, soup. Soup? Soup? Well, uh, this is the regular soup, and this is the special soup. Right. Special. Need some of that special soup. Hey, what are you doing? I'm spicing up the soup. It's my secret recipe. Listen, this ain't the Savoy, and we ain't here to feed these bozos no fancy soup. The boss has got a business to rebuild, so knock off the goofing and mind your post. All right, all right, just try the soup. Well? Ah, I can see why you want to keep this a secret. Right, so this is where we get the alcohol. Uh, excuse me. Yeah? Can I have a bowl of soup? You're a soup kitchen. What do you think? Uh, what kind of soup is this? It, it tastes like... Scrolle Ribolita? I was going to say weak old cabbage. <laughs> Everyone's a <laughs> yeah. critic. Look, all I got to work with is this two-bit soup in a barrel and spice rack that hadn't been restocked since the Coolidge administration. What do you think I should do to perk this slop up? Let's see. Have you tried... 
parsley, it might help to uh, complement the mellow flavor of the cabbage. Complement the mellow... What are you talking about? Trust me. Hmm. You might be on to something, kid. Let me see what I got. Again, that was a guess. That was a pure guess. The kitchen's for management only, Rummy. Whoa! Sorry, Jay, I was messing with his flap again. <laughs> yeah. I have considered it, and I've said no. <laughs> I better not talk to him. I don't want to mess up his timeline. Touch the flap, you get the barrel. I mean, that's what I want. No way I'm going to keep that door open without some help. Huddle up, Emmett. Huddle? Just listen up for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Emmett, I can't get into the door over there. Those tables are jamming it shut. The door? So your plan is to just waltz in there and take a barrel of alcohol? Uh, no, of course not. That would be stupid, right? I'll say. Still, I'd like to get that door open. I can't do anything from out here. Well, it's a simple matter of physics. A lever, some sort of stop. Let me see what I can come up with. Right, okay, so... We need to move the table from the door so then we get him looking at his, his soup so we go in the door to nick the barrel. That's what we need to do, yeah? Right, good. I better not talk to him. I don't want to mess up his timeline. Eureka! Wait, he's found something. Doc Jr.'s thingamabob holds out. Right, okay. We can try. We can okay. certainly try. I've got some more ideas about your soup. Do tell. Let's see. Have you tried... Let's try the chili then. Giving the soup a little heat, maybe? Why, is it getting cold? No, I, I mean, like chili powder. Muy caliente. Oh, bit of a tough guy, huh? Actually, I like it spicy too, but it's gotta be edible for the common folks. Come on, a little dash isn't gonna kill anyone. Aw, oh, heck. You got moxie, kid. Let's spice it up a bit, shall we? I no, I didn't want the inscription. Fuck off. How long will you keep on getting drunk? Get rid of your wine. 
Eli should mind his own business. Pretty neat, Doc. <laughs> nope. I'm still not getting through here. But at least those tables are propped up now. I hope Doc Jr.'s thingamabob holds out. Oh, damn it. So the tables are propped up. I hope Doc Jr.'s thingamabob holds out. So how are we going to get by the stacked I hope tables? Doc then? Jr.'s thingamabob holds out. Excuse me. You talking to me? Yeah. Why is the soup in a barrel? Because it's hard to ladle off the floor. I mean, the guy eating some soup. Oh, okay. Mind if I look around a bit? No. I better not talk to him. I don't want to mess up his timeline. So, no. <laughs> yeah. So we can't talk to Emmett now, so... Hey, where do you think you're going? The kitchen? The kitchen's for management only, rummy. Yeah, get him to adjust the soup, hit the pipe, and then try and go through that way. I still think the soup needs more flavor. We'll try that, we'll try that. Strickland, come for some more soup? Come now, Mr. Donnelly. You know I wouldn't set one foot in this mockery of all that is good and decent if the poor of Hill Valley weren't so dependent on Mr. Tennant's overblown show of generosity. Was that a yes? <sighs> Just give me the soup before I gag on the hypocrisy. I'll tell the boss you said hello. I'll just bet you will. And it picked up the barrel of hooch. Now all you have to do is to get it from her somehow. Right, okay, so now the soup kitchen y bit's done. So why do we need the invention part to stack up the table so the barrels wouldn't roll off? Emmett. Yes? Oh, that's interesting. Just a little mechanical ingenuity. In the end, the door is open. Yeah, good job. Obviously, this kitchen isn't the speakeasy. Indeed. This must be some sort of front meant to cleverly and legally obfuscate the existence of a hidden establishment of ill repute. Perhaps in the basement. Right. That might explain the elevator. Yeah, they would it. Hmm. We'll score that hooch somehow. I'll keep cogitating. Right, let's go. Let's go try and get the woman then to pass us the uh, the soup. Oh, 
All right, Edna, where are you? There she is. Why are you... <sighs> nice bike. Huffy? Huffy? I'm not Huffy. I'm passionate. Passionate about justice, safety, law and order. Uh, never mind. Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Callahan. Try not to draw any undue attention my way. I'm on the trail of a hot new scoop, as we in the newspaper business say. Mm. I'm sorry about the way Einstein lit into you back there. I don't know what got into him. Well, I hope you've learned to keep him under control. Yeah, I found someone to keep him distracted. Very good. Now let's see if you know your multiplication tables. <laughs> What's the scoop? I've heard rumors that something shady is going on at the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. It's under new management, you know. And, oh, we mustn't jump to any conclusions. Not till the facts are in. I hope to heaven it is just a rumor. That soup kitchen is the front line in the good fight. If it goes bad, what will happen to the Stay Sober Society? Not to mention all the charitable institutions that depend on me for soup deliveries. You make hot soup deliveries? It's one of my many small contributions to the good cause. Healthy bodies, healthy souls. Or so one hopes. I pick up barrels of hot soup at the kitchen, and I deliver them hither and thither. Hill Valley Orphanage, the St. Francis Xavier Ranch for Unwanted Children, Foggy Mountain Home for the Incurably Insane, Shady Acres Rest Home. Oh, I can barely keep track of them all. It's a very big job. Huh. What's the Stay Sober Society? You haven't heard of the SSS? They do the most marvelous work, taking hopeless, drunken bums and turning them into former hopeless, drunken bums. I'm one of the founding members. And not to say that I was ever, oh, well, you know. Anyway, we've always met in the cellar of the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen, but for some reason, the new managers don't want us down there, so we're stuck. We've got nowhere to meet. Yeah. I know a place where the Stay Sober Society can meet. Oh, where? We could meet in the speakeasy, the one that got bombed last Wednesday. Now, wouldn't that be poetic irony? But I'm not sure the building is structurally safe. <laughs> hey, I can help you deliver soup. I don't need a lot of time to charities. Oh, which ones? The, um, Mario Brothers. Ah, yes. The Italians do so many good works. If you'll just fix it so I can pick up the barrels of soup. Now hold your horses. Let's not get over eager. I drive the soup cycle in this town, and I'm not about to turn it over to an upstart. But if you're well connected with the local charitable institutions... Yeah? You can let me know when they're running low on soup. Did you finish the story you interviewed me for? About Carl Sagan? Yes, but those pig-headed editors at the paper rejected it. They said my story was slanted, and that I was glorifying a suspected arsonist. As if their stories aren't always glorifying the criminal vermin that run this town. This whole thing makes me so mad I could spit. Though of course I never would. There's an ordinance against it, and it's so untidy. Okay. I know a place where the Stay Sober Society can meet. Oh, where? <laughs> yeah, too busy shouting out windows. We can meet in the park. No, that's no good. Too many of the members sleep in the park. I know a place where the Stay Sober Society can meet. Oh, where? The Brown Residence. You mean Judge Brown's place? Yeah, I happen to be good friends with his son Emmett, and he's told me the judge would love to lend his place out for, you know, good causes like yours. Really? Why, that's the most generous, public-spirited offer I've received in a month of Sundays. Please, tell your friend Emmett we accept. And the offer couldn't have come at a better moment. It's almost time for the meeting to begin. Lovely. As a matter of fact, I do know a local charity that's running low on soup. Oh? Who? Uh... The 
rest home. No, it's way past their bedtime. You asked me to tell you if one of the local charities is running low on soup. Does somebody need a visit from my soup cycle? Yeah, you don't have a month. Well, you have four. Uh, yeah, let's wait a month for Sunday. Wait. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm like, 28 days worth of Sundays? The farm for unwanted children. No, they've already received their quota for the month. You asked me to tell you if one of the local charities is running low on soup. Does somebody need a visit from my soup cycle? You bring up a good point, Pixel. The orphanage. No, they've already got all the soup they can handle. You asked me to tell you if one I'll of the local charities is running find low the on one. soup. Does somebody need a visit from my soup cycle? The insane asylum. No, too much soup makes them nervous. You asked me to tell you if one of the local charities is running low on soup. Does somebody need a visit you see, that makes all sorts of sense as well, Jaden. Think you'll need to make one up, right? Never mind, I'm wrong. The pool hall isn't a charity. Certainly not. I got a book. Oh, where? So now we have to look and find where we can find a we can make a charity up. Hey, how you doing, Einie? Einie? It's short for Einstein. Einstein, of course, because he was a patent officer just like you. Right. Okay. Uh... To deliver a lot of subpoenas. Father's always sending so me out to find... do these dirty jobs. He wants to expose me to different kinds of people. It's always expose me to is a lot of new curse words. If serving subpoenas is such dirty work, why don't you just say no? Look, what's the worst thing that can happen to me on this job? You could get shot. Yeah, well, believe me, that's nothing compared to what I'll get if I mouth off to my pop. <laughs> Any idea where we could find Artie? Not a jot. If only we had a way of tracking him. How about Kid Tannen? What do we know about him? He's loud, he's obnoxious, he's not very bright, and he doesn't like anybody getting in his way. Yep, that's a Tannen, all right. We'll get that subpoena delivered. My name isn't... Harry Callahan! Yeah. Right, so now we have to find... So now we have to make up then a, a charity. <laughs> yeah, they can just be... <laughs> see us. <laughs> Like the ones who go to church aren't sinners themselves. Bless me, Father, I've sinned. So have I. <laughs> Heard it. <laughs> so we need to make, make up a charity. Get our soup delivered to so we can nick the alcohol. The escape plan. Your younger self needs 190 proof booze to fuel his rocket drill. Oh, that could be a problem. I know, we're both underage. Underage, nothing. It's 1931 and alcohol's been outlawed throughout the country. Are you sure you're about to graduate from high school? I'm kidding, Doc. It was a joke. A joke? If I live to be a hundred, and I almost have, I'll never understand a teenage compunction to make a joke out of everything. What's the story with this kid Tannen jerk anyway? Biff's father? 
By this time next year, he'll be pulling down a life sentence in San Quentin. There was even a song about it. Wait, if Biff will be born in 1938, and Kid will be in prison... As I recall, he escaped from prison in 1937 for about three hours. That's a busy three hours. No kidding. <laughs> What do you know about Edna Strickland? Edna? We never really socialized when I was younger. She was a few years older than me, and we traveled in different socioeconomic circles. Why do you ask? She thinks you're a hero for burning down that speakeasy. She's doing a story on you. A story? Oh, yes. Now I remember. Ask Edna. The etiquette column that doubled as a pro-temperance soapbox. She believed that the consumption of alcohol would inevitably lead to a complete societal breakdown. Sounds like a fun gal. You should have seen her when the hippies started showing up in the 60s. She just somehow lost her mind. That would explain a lot. <laughs> I know this really isn't the right time or place, but I found your notebook. Oh, so that's where I left it. Why'd you bring it here? Because the bank's selling off all your stuff. They can't do that. That's what I keep trying to tell them. Well, you hold on to it for safekeeping. We'll deal with my financial situation in 1986 after we save me from a grisly death in 1931. Yes, right, okay, so. Hang in there, Doc. Not the best choice of words, Marty. <clears throat> okay, so what we need to do, we need to find the charity, we need to find McFly, give him a subpoena. Looking for moonshine. So where would he be? Bank of Italy? Is he in the bank? How can I help you, sir? Without any money, I don't really have any business in there. Gail, Zemeckis, and Fine. Attorneys at law. <laughs> no solicitors. There's a nod. <laughs> Lamont's house of Ermin. I guess there's not much call for fur coats in the middle of the Depression, especially in June. Oh. But that's the achievement for it. <laughs> I wonder who really burned down the speakeasy. Just think, <laughs> in 55 years, I'll be able to rent five year old movies on this spot. I don't need anything in there, and I don't have any money. Hmm. Wait, was he in there? I better not go back in there. They're angry, and they've got scissors. Yeah, we don't want them running around with scissors, do we? I'm not so sure I want to stay in a place that welcomes transients. Shark! <laughs> wow, looks like they used a real shark. Right, so he's not anywhere here. Right, the Stay Sober Society needs a soup delivery. Okay, so that's what we need to do. So we don't need to make up one. So we're going to see McFly later on, I guess. So you know we've made we've made some progress in the, in part one. Not as much as I would like. I would like to have finished episode one, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Callahan. I'm afraid I haven't much time. The meeting of the Stay Sober Society is due to begin very soon. 
You asked me to tell you if one of the local charities is running low on soup. Does somebody need a visit for my soup cycle? The Stay Sober Society. That's right. They'll soon be gathering at the Brown Estate, and we haven't provided refreshments. I can't get over the generosity of your friend Emmett volunteering his father's house for our meeting. Huh? Which is how we can get to Emmett's alcohol to him. Harry! Deliver what it. In the name of Thomas Alva Edison, do you think you're doing? Don't you get it? You need alcohol to run your drill, right? Those bootleggers at the soup kitchen won't let us get our hands on any of their hooch. But we can get Miss Strickland to pick it up for us and deliver it right to your door. No! Out of the question! Why? I can't just let strangers invade my parents' house. What do we know about these people? They're sober. It says so right in the name. Well, okay, but... A pop needs his peace and quiet at the end of the day. This meeting is sure to be too noisy for him. You get your dad a pair of earplugs. I can't tell my father to wear earplugs. <laughs> yes, we can. What's wrong with a little noise? It'll be like a party. My pop is not the partying type. He'll be quiet. You'll be quiet, right? Oh, yes. I play my tambourine very softly. You hear that? Yes, but... <laughs> but what? But it's still impossible. But think of the Stay Sober Society. What'll happen to them? They can all fall off the wagon for all I care. But I promised Miss Strickland. It means so much to her. The answer is still no. Okay, forget the whole thing. We don't have to test your rocket power drill tonight. We don't? No. I'll take the train back to Washington and I'll tell the folks at the office to give the patent to Dr. McCoy. Wait! You will instruct the members of the society to wipe their feet before they come inside. Then you are, Emmett Brown. I thought as much. You have such a righteous face. Edna Strickland, I don't know oh. how to thank you for your generosity. <laughs> I mean, is that flirting, uh, lady? Pleased to meet you. The feeling is mutual. I've got a bad feeling about this. Now you worry too much, Emmett. Now all we got to do is serve that subpoena, and we're off to build your rocket drill. You get my patent. Yeah, your uh, patent. Lovely. Now, where is he? That's what we need to do. Earlier in the game, Marty used an object to find its owner. How? He used it because he used Einstein. I don't think so. Maybe not. That's how we did it. Because we used Einstein to get the to get the shoe back to her. The hat. Oh yes, the hat. Yes. Come here for a sec, boy. Hey, boy. Can you find the guy who belongs to this hat? Very good call, Deckon. Where is he going? Only one way to find out. <laughs> Quick hide! Huh. Deja vu. Come down a minute. Do I know you? We've 
got something for you. It's a sub a subscription to the Accountant Weekly. He won't come out if he knows why we're really here. No, oh, right. <laughs> I'm not interested. And besides, the boss won't let me leave the room. Sorry. Some other time. I don't think that would be interested in Arthur's hat. I don't think that would be interested in Arthur's hat. This hat belongs to my grandfather. I already did that. That's how we got here. See, I was thinking used a... Uh... Not sure what that... Can we climb up there? Not sure what that... what that not sure what that hmm. to get Arthur out you'll need to go and get something from the town centre not sure what that not sure what that So if we can't go back to the town centre... So we can't go back to the town centre, so we must have what we have. What we... Can I wear the hat? What now? Give it back to him after I give him the subpoena. I don't think that would be interested in Arthur's hat. I don't think that would be interested in Arthur's hat. I don't need to push it again. Arthur's already there. Right, okay, so if he's there. What do I do now? Do I just talk to him or give him the subpoena? Someone's playing tricks on me. We'll do this, we'll work this bit out, and then that's where we'll call it. Not sure what that... Not sure what that... Not sure what that... What now? It's me again. Please come down. Why? Uh. We've got some important information for you, but we can't yell it. It's private. Then put it in a postcard and send it. I'm stuck up here till the boss tells me I can leave. Sorry. Some other time. Okay, so we'll try. We are the Lord and all we're family. Jenny Finger can think of. What now? It's me again. Please come down. Why? 
We represent the law. You don't want to go against the law, do you? No, but I don't want to go against Kid Tannen either. And he ordered me to stay put till he gives the word. Sorry. Some other time. Let's go for your family then. What now? It's me again. Please come down. Why? I'm your grand... Uh, mother's great nephew. You mean my second cousin? Yeah. Glad to know you, but I can't leave this building till the boss says so. He's given strict orders. Sorry. Some other time. Now. It's me again. Please come down. Why? We've got something for you. It's a sub uh, subscription to the Accountant Weekly. He won't come out if he knows why we're really here. No. Right. <laughs> yeah, but it won't, let me, it won't let me escape. It won't let me leave. The boss won't let me leave the room. Sorry. Some other time. Let's have a look. Let's see about exiting again to the town centre. Oh, now it does. Oh, okay. I have to do the recording bit again, yeah? Oh, fuck's sake! Fucking... goes back. They say rats always return to the scene of the sinking ship. Uh, get him, Matches. Come down from the... What are you doing up there, you scrawny little runt? Get down here right now! Don't make me angry, Smucko! Get down here and face the music! You Matches. can't get away that easy! What do you think you're doing up there, you scrawny little runt? Get down here right now! You're only making it worse for yourself! The longer you stay up there, the longer I'm going to take evacuating your guts! Eviscerate. What do you think you're doing up there, you scrawny little runt? Get down here right now! So we've recorded it, now we're just going <laughs> to... I'm down from there, you son of a bitch! I don't want to record them right, right now. now! That's an order! Don't make me angry, Smucko! Get down here and face the music! You can't get away that easy! Nobody puts one over on Kid Tannen and lives to tell about it! You're dead meat, twerp! Better start composing your epitaph now, because I'm going to carve it into your face! In bullets! Get down here! You're only making it worse for yourself! The longer you stay up there, I don't the longer record I'm right going to take evacuating your guts! I don't want to record them right now. That's what I said. So if you... You know what's good for you, you'll get the hell down from there! You listening? I'm a patient guy, but my... My trigger finger's getting it. Einstein! Help! Lay off! Get away 
Get out, crazy mutt. Go. So you have to sort of un-equip. Hey, where'd he go? You let him get away, idiot. Right, we'll go back to get Evo. We'll get that subpoena delivered. We'll get that subpoena delivered. Right, so we know where he is. So let's go back to him then. Let's see what's the time. Court come up for quarter past twelve. I want to get this little bit done, so then we can move on. So yeah, so you get an extra while well, I'm already here. Not sure what that... Right, hang on. What now? McFly? Yeah? Got something for you. Thanks. A subpoena? Ordering you to appear in court and provide evidence in the investigation into... Kid Tannen? <laughs> Take it back. Yep. You can't get rid of it, Mr. McFly. Once you've been served, it's your duty to report to the court at the earliest possible time. Failure to do so could lead to a warrant for your arrest. Arrest? But Kid will kill me. Stupid, stupid, arty, holy cats, what am I gonna do? I suggest you avail yourself to the protection of the court. Oh gosh, oh gosh. Well, we've served the subpoena and got a barrel of booze delivered to your house. Looks like we're off to your lab to build your rocket drill. Uh, you do have a lab, right? What kind of future patent holder would I be without a lab? Come on! Doc! I'm off to get the rocket drill. Good! Come on, let's go! Time waits for no man! <laughs> Are you sure this is going to work, Emmett? Don't let the ramshackle nature of my laboratory fool you. If all goes according to plan, we'll soon be in possession of the most powerful rocket fuel known to man. That's great. Hey, how? Well, it's very simple. This crankshaft induces a powerful direct current into the electrolysis chamber, producing hydrogen, which must be periodically released into the primary distillation barrel. While tending to the hydrogen, we'll also need to regularly sprinkle these shredded protein flakes into this aquarium of tuber bacteria to generate the necessary nitrogen to catalyze the reaction. Cool. Oh, hot! Extremely hot! The temperature of the reaction must be kept at a steady temperature of 623 degrees Kelvin by carefully pumping these bellows! Any questions? <laughs> Many questions. Uh... Amen? Why is there a brace of drunkards gathering on our lawn? Sweet fancy Moses, it's my father! So? So, he doesn't know I'm engaging in acts of scientific exploration in here. He thinks this is where I go to pour through my law books. Oh. You tend to the reaction, I'll try to get rid of him. Tend to the... what? Can't we just start over after he's gone? It's too late, the reaction's already started. Don't worry, I'll try to help you out where I can. But... Amen! Uh, coming, father! 
father. Don't you father me, child. Okay, so next week. Your burning passion, father, but it is not mine. Next week, we shall save. Well, well, we'll save anyway, but you know. Oh, it's also auto. Oh. Yeah, next time we will blow up the lab. So anyway, thank you very, very much for being here. Been good. Been good. Been very good. Okay, so yeah, so good to be back, good to be back streaming, we did a little bit extra, so next week we shall do the lab, we shall get the lab blown up and uh, get the drill and things, so yeah, so I will be back on Tuesday for the start of Child of Light. Which should be, um, it's a platform RPG. We've got to have money. Ooh, thank you very much for the bits. Thank you very much for the bits, Corn. Thank you very, very much. Let's have a quick look if anybody is on for a raid. Let's have a quick look if any... I can say no. Nobody is. So we'll leave it there. So thank you very much for being a part of this. I will see you Tuesday. Have yourselves a wonderful Sunday. Try not to melt because, you know, it's going to be a hot one again. But, you know, from Monday, thunderstorms and cooling off again. So you take care and I'll catch you later. Bye bye.